So let's say we want to synchronize between commands. So each individual queue can execute in order or out of order. So for an in order queue, all commands execute in order as you would expect. And this behaves just as you had expected as long as you're in queuing from one thread. Things can be uh, more complicated if you're in queuing from multiple threads on the host side. You must explicitly synchronize between queues. So let's say you have multiple devices. So let's say you have an OpenCL device uh, that you're using on the AMD CPUs, and you have another OpenCL device that you're using on ATI GPUs. So you're going to have two different queues, each with one queue to those devices. Um, and you have to use explicit synchronization between those queues. The way we do this is we use events. So there are commands that return events and obey waitlist. So every command, you can give it a waitlist to say, wait on these events. And they also return an event that tells you, uh, this is the event ID that I use. So any of the in queue commands will uh, take in three different arguments. So the first of the arguments is a number of things to wait on, and then a list of those uh, events to actually wait on. And the final argument is the event that that command creates that you can further use in other commands to do synchronization. So let's give a, a simple example where we have one device and one queue. So in this case, kernel two is gonna use the result of kernel one. So with one queue, we're gonna enqueue kernel one at some time point. It's gonna go into the queue, but it's not gonna necessarily execute as soon as we uh, enqueue it into the queue. But we can also enqueue kernel two right away. And that's because these are asynchronous calls. So they return right away uh, as soon as you call them. So we'll enqueue kernel two, but it's enqueued in the queue and it's not gonna execute until after kernel one is executed because we have a single in order queue. So after kernel one finishes, kernel two then be executed on the GPU, just sort of exactly how we'd expect it because it's a single in order queue. So let's talk about a slightly more complicated example. So let's say we have two devices and two queues. So in blue, we have kernel one and in uh, purple, we have Q2. So in this case, we're gonna have kernel one running on the GPU and kernel two running on the CPU. And what's gonna be a little bit different about this is that kernel one, which is running on the GPU, is gonna output some data. That's gonna be input into kernel two, which is running on the CPU. So there is an explicit dependency here. Kernel one must finish before kernel two starts because the data from kernel one is gonna be used in kernel two. So let's look at how this would happen if we didn't use events. So notice we'll have two queues here. We have two devices and two queues. We have one queue for the CPU and one queue for the GPU. So we're gonna enqueue kernel one on the GPU's queue. It'll uh, go into the GPU's queue and sit there for a little bit. And then at some point uh, after that, we're gonna enqueue kernel two and that'll go into the CPU's queue. So at some point, the runtime will decide it needs to enqueue uh, on the GPU kernel one. But simultaneously, it might actually decide that, hey, I can enqueue kernel two on the CPU because the CPU is free. So if we don't use any synchronization, what will happen is kernel one and kernel two will be executed at the same time. Clearly, that's not what we want because kernel one is producing data that kernel two needs. What we really need to do is we'll enqueue kernel one, kernel two will wait until kernel one is actually done. Once kernel one finishes, we can then have kernel two actually start executing on the CPU. And that way we can ensure that the data produced by kernel one is then used by kernel two. So this is where we use events. So the events tell the runtime which kernels need to wait on other kernels. Besides actually using events to manage uh, kernels that are run in, in our queue, we actually might want to manage these events from the application. So this allows the application to actually uh, further optimize and use resources as much as possible. So in this case, there are a couple ways we can use events on the host application. One is the CL wait for events call. And that's pretty simple. It just takes in a number of events to wait and a list of events to wait on. So what's gonna happen is when you call this, the host application will wait and block until all events in that list are completed. Another interesting thing you can do is you can enqueue a marker. So this allows you to put a marker into the queue that you can use to track how fast things are moving uh, through the uh, queue. So when you're doing optimization and performance op uh, testing, you'll be able to know when th certain things are happening. Another option is to enqueue wait for events. So this is similar for wait for events, except what we're doing is we're enqueuing this into the uh, into the queue system so that the OpenCL runtime itself will block. So the nice thing about this is that it allows your application to go off and do something else, but still have a point at which you know uh, the OpenCL runtime has reached a certain point, but you're still not blocking on that application. Finally, there's also the CL GitHub info. 
And so this will tell you uh, command types and status. So you can ask for a certain command, has it been queued? Has it been submitted? Is it running? Is it complete? Or is there some error code? So this gives you, uh, the application as you're doing full, more and more uh, optimization to know exactly what's going on. And the last thing I want to talk about on this slide is that uh, CL get event profiling info. So this gives you basically command queue, uh, submit, start, and end times. And what this allows you to do is actually profile your application so you can figure out what kernels are taking the most amount of time so you can further optimize those kernels as needed. So this has been video four, and I thank you for watching. This is Justin Hensley.